All right, everybody, welcome to River West Palm Beach Church on a Sunday morning. Good to have you guys up early in the morning to come praise the Lord with me. Come on, stand to your feet. Lord, we just praise you, Lord. We invite you to come into this place. Touch us, change us, and fill us. There is none like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Come on, put your hands together. This one thing I'm asking, one thing I'm needing, a moment that's passing is not what I'm seeking. Like it's the air I'm breathing, I want your presence, feet on the earth, heart full of heaven's zeal for you, completely consumes me, I can't get enough. Can't get enough of you. Your fire burning her through me. I can't get enough. Can't get enough of you. You can't get enough of you. You can't get enough of you. I'm after your spirit more than a feeling. I don't need a reason to keep chasing who you are. Like it's the air I'm breathing. I want your presence, feet on the earth. My heart full of heaven, seal for you. Completely consumes me. I can't get in. Can't get enough of you. Your fire burning right through me. I can't get enough. Can't get enough of you. You can't get enough of you. You can't get enough of you. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it with me. Every beat is yours, you can have it all Take over like only you can All I'm reaching for, you and nothing more Take over like only you can Every beat is yours, you can have it all Take over like only you can All I'm reaching for, you and nothing more Take over like only you can. Hey. Come on, here we go. Come on, sing. Zeal for you completely consumes me. I can't get enough, can't get enough of you. Your fire burning right through me. I can't get enough. Can't get enough of you. You can't get enough of you. You can't get enough of you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's prophesy our future in Jesus name come on breaking off every chain and the fear that held me I refuse to agree with the lies they told me I take up my position speak to all my conditions take the authority you want for me the word of the Lord in my mouth to bring about the change full of your power I step out declare aloud your praise I prophesy hey and 
and I prophesy. Oh, oh, and I prophesy. I'm stepping up. I'm stepping up to become everything you've called me. I believe in your word and your spirit in me. I take up my position, speak to all my conditions, take the authority you want for me. The word of the Lord in my mouth to bring about the change full of your power and step out declare aloud your praise i prophesy hey and i prophesy come on and i prophesy Come on, let's praise him. And I'll praise you like I've never known a feet. I'll praise you every second you've redeemed. I'll praise you. Your power rests on me. And I'll praise you now for every victory. And I'll praise you because your spirit is in me. I'll praise you. Your power rests on me. The word of the Lord in my mouth to bring about the change. Full of your power, I step out, declare aloud your praise. I prophesy. Come on. And I prophesy. Oh, hey. and I prophesy. Come on, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So come on, let's speak life over our circumstances. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory for all that you've brought us through. Thank you, Lord. And we're ready for the next step that you have for us. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I give you glory for all you brought me through. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward follow after you and now i'm ready for whatever you want to do your presence is an open door we want you lord like never before your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing. 
The best is yet to come. Come on, do you believe that? The cross before me, my hope on things above. And in you, Jesus, the best is yet to come. Hey! Your presence is in open door. We want you. Lord, like never before, your presence is in open door, so come now, Lord, like never before. Thank you, Lord. Come on, declare with me. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Hey! And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Come on, sing one more time. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle my God made me a promise and it won't stop now oh. Hallelujah. You're so good. Well, we worship you, God. You are so faithful. Oh, you're so faithful, God. Oh, na 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 ma Come on, declare it. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God. Made me a promise and it won't stop now. Come on. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. And I know the breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see a miracle. God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Come on, give me a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. He is worthy of it all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. We know that breakthrough is coming. And we're going to press in like never before until we see that breakthrough in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Give him some praise. He is worthy. Hey, hey. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and praise him. 
Make a joyful sound unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody say, Woo! <laughs> That's a joyful sound. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? The Lord is good and He's going to be good to you today. Amen, amen, amen. I believe we're going to have a great time in the presence of God. God's going to move. God's going to touch you. Amen. We're going to be blessed, strengthened. We're going to be taught the Word of God. Amen. And we're going to be changed. And we're going to be blessed. And we're going to grow. We're going to go to another level. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. But well, why don't you turn and greet one or two or three people. Tell them you love them. We welcome you here this morning to River West Palm Beach. And if you're with us for the very first time, we welcome you and bless you. So, amen. Hallelujah. And we welcome those watching our broadcast. Amen. And let's uh, hear some announcements and then we'll get back to a time of worship. Good morning, River family. How are you today? I'm so glad you're here today. Welcome to River West Palm Beach Church. Uh, we uh, have flyers. Ushers have flyers. Please bring some friends and family later today or next week. And um, also, we want to especially welcome our first-time visitor today. Um, if you're a first-time visitor, is there any first-time visitor in the house? Anyway, welcome. And if you, uh, 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 you would have received a card when you came in, we would love you to fill it out, and, and we would love to get to know you more, fill it out and give it to an usher later or put it in the offering basket. And our service times are Sunday morning. This is the main event at 10 a.m. And uh, at 7 p.m. we have our revival service on Sunday. Come back tonight for more. And Tuesday night at 7 p.m. we have our corporate prayer and Bible study. And it's amazing, powerful. Our pastor has been teaching about end times. It was really great. I'm glad I didn't miss it last week. So come and uh, come and pray. And then we'll, uh, the pastors always have a great word to share. So on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And Wednesday night, we have our group of Vida, a live group in Espanol at 7 p.m. And Thursday at 7 p.m., we have a live group. But this week, this week, October 17, you do not want to miss because Pastor Corey is going to be uh, giving the membership class. And last week, um, the church has received their first member. So you don't want to miss, yay? <laughs> yes, uh, it's just a privilege to be in this house. And to, if you don't have a home church, uh, we invite you to be planted in this house. And we receive good word and the anointing in this house. So uh, come this Thursday at 7 p.m. for the uh, membership class. And also on Friday, we have youth group, but not this week because um, Josh is going to be out of town. And um, Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we have soul winning and outreach. So if you have not gone out before, uh, we have a soul winning script that we train you with. And on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we meet on this side of the building on the west side and come. And those, the Bible says those who win souls are wise. Amen. So uh, we have a great group that came this Saturday, RSM uh, River School of Ministries are doing great. Uh, um, the students are doing great. Uh, first time going out. And so, so we invite you to come and, and join us with vision of what Jesus said. The Great Commission is go preach the gospel, right? Amen. So come on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. And also we uh, have a healing and miracle service on October 27. Mark your calendar uh, every month. Uh, last weekend of the month at 7 p.m. October 27 is a he next healing and miracle service. And also uh, we want want you to uh, mark your calendar for November 23rd is our church picnic. Who's excited about the picnic? It's a month away, but it's going to be right around the corner. Yeah, we're getting ready for the picnic. It's going to be at Oki Healy Park, and we're giving you a lot of notice. So black out your calendar. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> starts at 1030. Uh, bring your kids, and it's a very secure area. There's a picnic area, and there's, uh, there's also a playground, and there's actually a boundary. So uh, it's very safe for kids. So bring Bring, bring you, uh, come, and we would love to um, fellowship with you and get to know you more. So we're going to, um, uh, and it's also Thanksgiving's time. So we're very, we, we, it's a great time to be out there, and it's going to be great weather that day. So uh, mark your calendar for November 23rd. Amen. 
All right. So um, right now, um, if you don't have uh, the River Church app, you should download it. <laughs> Go to riverwpb.com forward slash app, and um, and you um, you will find Pastor's blog. By the way, uh, this is the October uh, bulletin. If you came in, you didn't get one. I encourage you to get it because Pastor has always a wonderful teaching. And also on the app, you can find the blog, and you can give on the app. You can. I uh, have a prayer request as a prayer wall, and you can follow the church events and see photos on the app. And also, we are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, or We welcome you, those watching online. We're on the broadcast. Good morning. Those watching online, or good afternoon, or good evening, all around the world watching, welcome. Um, we're on the broadcast every, uh, um, every morning here at 10 a.m. Um, when we have services. And also, we invite you to... Um, uh, come and uh, join our River Ministry of Health. Uh, we have great uh, volunteers here. Many hands make the load lighter. So if you would like to be planted in this house and serve, um, ushers have forms. Please go ahead and take one, and we'd love you to come and serve alongside us. And we invite you to um, bring your kids here at River Kids, as we would love to have um, them be under the worship and the pr and praise with our wonderful staff here in the ministry of the River Kids and also have their word imparted into their life and the anointing. And it's such a powerful gift that we can give our children here at River Kids. And also we have our water baptism sign up. If you have been born again and you've never been ba water baptized, uh, there's a, pay, a list outside. Uh, please put your name down. And we had a wonderful baptism uh, last August and we will let you know at the next time. And um, right now we ask you to check your phone. Uh, Please, um, no chewing gum, food, or drinks in the sanctuary except for water. Bless God. And let's turn our heart unto the Lord. Amen. Why don't you guys stand to your feet? All of our worship must flow out of the revelation of who God is to you. So who is God to you? I want you to reflect on that as we worship Him and praise Him out of that attitude of who is God to you? What has He done for you? And I can tell you one thing, that He is worthy of all of our praise all day, all night. Every day, 365 days a year. He's worthy of all of our praise. The angels are, are singing, are crying out, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He who was and is and is to come. Right now. And they're doing it for all eternity and they never grow old. It never grows old for them. So when we worship Him, let's not, let's not come with an attitude of, you know, oh, it's just worship time. He's saying, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes we can be like that sometimes. You know, we can come and we can be just like, you know, you know, we're going to play a couple songs, sing a couple songs, and then, you know, get it over with. But no, this is the time where you get to tell God how amazing he is. And you know what the amazing thing about it is? Is that when you worship him and you praise him, his presence comes. The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So when you praise him with all your heart, his presence comes and he fills this place and he fills your life. And you know what? You were created to be in the presence of God. In the very beginning, he created you to be in the presence of God. And that is where Christians are meant, us as Christians, we are meant to to dwell in. The, the presence of God is where we were originally meant to function. So come on, let's invite his presence into this place with our praises in Jesus' name. song I could ever sing 
Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Thank you, Jesus. Sing worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, for Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Come on, sing holy. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are. Fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. will build. No one like you, 
there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart lead me in your love to those around i will build i will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken i will not be shaken hallelujah
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free heaven's shame is undone your presence Lord come on say Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are welcome come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord there's nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare your living home your presence Lord. taste it and see and I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the eye your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, to come flood this place and fill the atmosphere, your glory. God is what our hearts long for, but to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Come on, see, let us become, let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us 
just become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy, God. Want to become more aware of your presence. Cause your presence is better than life. Your presence is better than life. your voice in your heavenly language just singing Of it all, 
you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Sing this of it all. spontaneous you are worthy. song of the Spirit now. You are worthy. Sing it. You are worthy. Of it all, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of it all, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of it all, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of it all, you are worthy. Lift your voices to the King. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of it all, you are worthy. You are worthy, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy, you are worthy, you are worthy. Enter in, of it all. You are worthy, you are worthy, yield, you are worthy, yield to the Holy Spirit. Of it all, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Of it all. Oh, thank you, Father. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are worthy. You are worthy. We worship you. We come to today, this morning, to honor you. We have not come seeking a man. We have not come to some building, some gathering of people, but we've come to your presence. We've come. And we are pressing in beyond the veil of the flesh. We lay aside everything of the natural. We lay aside everything of the week. We shake it off. Of the past week, actually. This is the first day of the week, guys. And so we're starting out our week as we give the Lord the first fruits. That's why it's so important to worship, come together and worship Sunday morning. This is not some church tradition. This is a principle. Because if you think about it, when you wake up Sunday morning, you're waking up to a new week. And the very first morning of the week, we set aside to come, worship the Lord. We give Him the first fruits of our time. We give Him the first fruits of our energy. And we give Him the first fruits of everything we have to worship Him, to honor Him. And as we honor Him, you see, it is so important. It is vital. That we establish those principles and priorities we start our week right it should never be an option to come worship Sunday morning it should always be and again not this is not out of legalism but for me it's just a no-brainer for me it's just there's no option it is a must I must start my week worshiping my king I must start my week with the Lord because then every, the rest of the week just begins to line up differently. And God's not an afterthought. He's the very first thing that we focus on as we start our week. Jesus rose from the day on the very first day of the week, Sunday morning. And that's why it's become sort of a church tradition. But it's not, again, a tradition. It's a principle. Because we start our week right. That the very first thing that we do, obviously after waking up and showering and getting breakfast and getting dressed up as we go to church and that was something that was established in America I mean everything was church Sunday was church Sunday morning was church but then many other things started to get in the way in the malls and the shopping and the NFLs and everything else and and begin to take over and begin to pull people's hearts away from the things of God and that became the downfall of this nation in many ways we're gonna get we're gonna give Sunday morning back to Jesus we're gonna give Sunday morning back to God Sunday is the Lord's day not the NFL's day amen it's the Lord's day it's not beach day amen it's the Lord's day hallelujah it's not a day for picnic we're gonna camp out in the Lord's presence Come on, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome this morning. Are you happy? How many of you feel the presence of, of the Lord here? The Lord said, go to West Palm Beach, dig a ditch, and I'll fill it. 
He said, go make room for my presence. Go make room for the anointing. If you make room for the anointing, I'll make room for you. And we're making room for the anointing. This is like an upper room. I know it's, it's on the ground level, but it's like an upper room, like a Pentecost upper room, you know, where the 120 gathered to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were in one accord in one place, focused on the Lord, waiting, 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 not moving, not being distracted. Hallelujah. Praise God. Turn and greet one or two or three people, if you would, please, and just go out of your way to greet someone, love on someone, and we welcome you here today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hallelujah. Welcome today. hear about the outreach and and we had some powerful things happen this week hallelujah praise god <laughs> we're so blessed in this house that we get to go out and we get equipped we got trained uh, we had a few a couple of new rsm students Shay came with us and she did amazing and um the other person i had a phone call like out of the blue um from Vanessa, I don't know if you remember her, she came to one of our outreaches and she's not here this morning, but she's like, you know this thing that you go on Saturday morning? I want to go. I'm like, really? I almost fell out of my chair. I'm like, you know, when I pick up the phone. So, but the amazing thing is um, she had a dream. She came last week and um, she, um, Sunday night she came and then Monday morning, like a, a night morning between Saturday, Sunday and Monday, she had a dream that Jesus was um, giving her some more flyers, which actually she said it looks just like our healing miracle service in her dream. Jesus was handing her flyers to say, go and pass this out, and you're going to have your breakthrough. <laughs> that was so powerful. And so she called, she called the church. I think she talked to pastor, and she called me too. So she came yesterday, and she did amazing, and she was praying for people, and as if she's always been, been you know, preaching the gospel. And she was so bold, and she said, no, I'm so shy. But when she was out on the field, it was amazing. And yesterday, we talked to many people. Uh, there were six people that went out, but we had 41 prayers of salvation hallelujah praise god so it's just amazing um we invite you to come on saturday um it's just an amazing time we get to go because we partner with heaven right amen amen so, all right so it's just exciting to to have people come and wanting to go out so we this this is the heart of the house so we invite you all to come on saturday morning amen amen wonderful thank you doreen awesome 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 and then we started with our new rsm class and um, the fruit of the spirit that's going great and we have just some uh, amazing students that are fired up about the school amen hallelujah this Thursday this Thursday I want to just repeat is our membership class this is our second membership class Thursday at 7 p.m. we'll be having a membership class and what I mean by membership class we you know we spend about two hours with you um, you know, if you want to become a member of our church and find out about the vision of the church and what we do here and also understand what church membership is and what are the basic, the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of church membership and uh, become actually an official active member of River West Palm Beach, you're welcome to come and uh, be in our church membership class here this Thursday. And that's going to be at 7 p.m. in our fellowship hall. I'll be there. Uh, sharing the vision and teaching on the subject and then uh, you have an opportunity to ask questions and find out more about church membership and uh, you can become a member of our church and we will receive you into church membership at our next um, uh, you know, when we do the, the, the church membership uh, blessing of our church members like we did last Sunday and um, and we've got our healing and miracle service coming up again and the first Sunday of Nov November uh, that, that is as of just yesterday, fresh off the press, hot off the press, is Pastor Tim Finlayson will be here with us for the Sunday morning and Sunday evening services. Amen. Are you excited about that? So he's going to come and minister 
and Pastor Rose and myself and Gloria, we are going to finally get a chance to take vacation. We have not had a vacation in two years, guys, so it's just been a bit hectic over the summer, and some plans have to change, and so we're going to get to just finally go away for a little bit, and, um, you know, so um, be in prayer, be in praying, be in prayer for us so we get, you know, have a great time to get refreshed. I'm planning on really having a great time, but you guys are going to be in, in good hands here with our team and Pastor Tim coming to minister. He always, you know, does a great job when he comes and you guys know him, most of you know him and, and uh, he's going to be a great blessing. Him and his wife are always a great blessing. So, awesome. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. And if you're able, you can follow me from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. So if you have electronic Bibles, you can pull it up for the Passion Translation and, and follow me. But I'm going to read from verse 6. Here is my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. So when it comes to giving, I call them the triple A's of giving. You know, everybody wants the triple A to come and tow them away. But this triple A is, is a better one. But I, when I talk about the triple A's of giving, the first A is the amount. You know, it is important, the amount that we give, because I, as you can see, you know, smaller the amount that you sow, smaller the harvest. I mean, God will take whatever you give him, and he'll multiply it, obviously, and He's going to multiply, he's going to bless it, he's going to increase it, and he's going to return back to you the harvest of blessing. But obviously, you know, the proportion of the seed is going to determine the proportion of the harvest. And so the amount does matter. Because I've heard people say, oh, it doesn't matter how much you give as long as you give. No, it does matter, obviously, because the Bible is very clear about it, because you can't make a statement like that because it wouldn't be biblical. So the amount is definitely important. The amount of the seed is going to determine the amount of the harvest. And larger the seed, larger the harvest. And if you believe in God for a big harvest, then you're going to need to sow in proportion because you go where you sow. Amen. You can't be sowing, you know, 10 bucks and believing God for $10 million. I mean, you know, uh, obviously the Lord will increase you, but, you know, you got to understand that your giving has to increase. And as the Lord blesses you and increases you, then you can continue to believe God for, for the next level. But it's kind of hard to go from way down here, way up there. It is a process, and, and, and you got to keep sowing, you got to keep believing, and you got to keep stretching your faith out, and then you got to keep believing God for the next level and just keep, you know, going up the levels because the Bible talks about being changed from glory unto glory, going from faith to faith. Amen. So the amount does matter, the amount that you sow, and of course, as you sow from a generous spirit, you'll reap an abundant harvest, and that brings us to the second A, attitude. Attitude is of the heart. Amen. And then verse 7 says, let giving flow from your heart, because that's what flows from your heart. Your attitude is what's in your heart. Not from a sense of religious duty. We don't give out a religious duty. You know, we don't, don't give out of a religious duty. Don't give out because you, you have to. Uh, otherwise, you think that God's going to punish you and strike you down. You know, obviously, we don't give out of fear. And we also don't give out of legalism, because it's got to flow from your heart. It's got to be a willing, generous Cheerful giving, because it says, let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. you got to experience the joy of giving. Some people don't have joy in their lives because they're not givers. Uh-oh, I said it. Takers are never going to be joyful, guys. Takers are always going to be looking at other people and always frustrated because somebody didn't do something that they expected. Amen. Put your expectations on God, not on people. I learned a long time ago to just put my expectations on God, put pressure on the Word of God, and I know that I know if I'm doing what the Word says, then I don't have to worry about anybody else. Amen? The Lord's going to take care of me. The Lord's going to bless me. Amen? Because if I'm doing right, then I'm going to have the right harvest. I'm going to have the right results. Amen? And so, you know, because unfortunately, you know, people will do things and they'll promise things and not come through and whatever but amen but you just you know you focus on the word and you do what God tells you to do and you don't worry about anybody else amen take your eyes off of man amen you know don't be like the the guy that was at the pool at Bethesda always saying I don't have a man to put me in the pool 
And many people are always looking for somebody else. If I just had this person help me. If I just had that connection. Amen. Just connect with the Holy Ghost. Connect with the Word of God. Amen. Press in and you'll see the results. Hallelujah. So let it spring up freely from the joy of giving. So amen. I always say this. Givers never complain and complainers never give. Amen. So there's a joy of giving. And the Apostle Paul said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Because something happens when you become a giver. You tap into a whole new level of joy that comes from the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All because God loves hilarious generosity. <laughs> Somebody help me with that hilarious. Somebody over here help me with that hilarious. <laughs> Somebody over here help me with that hilarious. There you go. <laughs> God loves hilarious generosity. Yes. I like that. Yes. God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment, and in every way. He will make you overflow. Somebody say overflow. Turn to your neighbor say overflow. With abundance in every good thing you do. So, first A, amount. Second A, attitude. Third A, action. Giving is an action. Well, Pastor God knows my heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Act on it then. You know, bring it out. Let it manifest. Let it come forth. There's got to be action. Faith is action, guys. Faith is action. Faith without action is dead. Well, God knows my heart. How many of you ever, ever heard somebody say that? Well, God knows my heart, you know? And they can hide behind that. No, but we see your actions. Amen. And God wants to see action as well. Amen? So you got the amount, you got the attitude, and you got the action. And then when you act, guess what happens? God acts. When God acts, mm, look at what, let's read it again. This is what happens when God acts. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. Uh, who wants to be overwhelmed with every form of grace? Come on, guys. Three of you. How, come on, guys. Let me try. Who wants to be overwhelmed with every form of grace? Okay, you're waking up this morning. And then what happens What's, what's the reason for him overwhelming you with every form of grace? So that you will have more than enough of everything. You will have more than enough of everything. That right there is actually one of God's names. El Shaddai. God who's more than enough. The all-sufficient one. The God of the overflow. The God of the abundance. Mm. Hallelujah. You will have more than enough of everything. See, God's not against you having things. But you, when you have the, the, the three A's, like the three legs of a stool, you know, a chair. You need at least to have three legs. You can't have a chair with two legs, right? You can't have a tripod without a, with two legs. Amen. So the three legs, the attitude, the amount, and the action... Is going to get God working on your side. And then, of course, you're going to have enough of everything, every moment and in every way. So time and situations, it doesn't matter. Because he will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Praise God. Just as the scriptures say about the one who trusts in him. Because he has sown, right, extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. Right? What does God do? He gives. He's a giver. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his one and only begotten son. And this generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer or the sower, which becomes bread for, your, for our meals, is even more extravagant toward you. 
First he supplies every need plus more. Then he supplies the seed as you sow it so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. Now let's look at this. This is very important. This is very, last week I talked about being in debt with God. Disobedience causes debt, right? Disobedience will cause debt. What does that mean? Disobedience will cause you to lose time. It'll cause you to lose money. It'll cause you to lose your peace, lose your joy. Amen. It can even cause you to lose opportunities. It can cause you to lose a ministry. Amen. It can cause you to lose relationships. Disobedience will always bring you to a place of deficit. And God's very clear about it. I mean, if you look at it in Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know, it talks about the blessings, right? If you'll obey my commandments, do what I tell you to do, and, 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 and observe to do my statutes, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, right? And I'll give you a surplus of prosperity. I will open to you my heavenly treasure, pour you out, right? Blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. You'll be the head, not the tail. You'll be above only, not beneath. You'll be blessed going in. You'll be blessed coming out. Hallelujah. If your enemies come against you, they'll be defeated before your face, and they shall flee from you in seven directions. Glory to God. And op- uh, he said, I'll open to you my heavenly treasure, pour you out the blessing, rain, bring my rain upon you, give you a surplus. See, obedience always brings surplus. And then if you continue to read, then gets into the cursings, and if you don't obey my commandments, if you don't do my statutes, then you're going to end up in debt. You're going to end up in a deficit. So disobedience always causes a debt. And I made a decision a long time ago. I'm not going to be God's debtor. Amen. Everybody's trying to get out of debt, but you got to get out of debt with God. you got to become obedient because disobedience is going to cause you to be in debt. It's going to cause you to lose out on what God has for you, right? Redeeming the time for the days are evil. And the word redeem, remember it means to purchase with a price, to buy back. Just like Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law because he paid the price, right? The wages of sin is death. And so he paid the price, amen, to redeem us, to save us, to heal us, to deliver us, to break the curse so that we can be blessed, amen? And he paid the price, but then we are told to redeem the time. That means we're going to have to pay the price that it's going to... What is the price? The only only price you got to pay is obedience. And sometimes it's a a heavy price on the flesh because the flesh doesn't want to be obedient. I just don't want to do it. The flesh can act like a spoiled little child, wants its own way. You got to put the flesh under, say, absolutely not. Flesh, you're not going to rule over me. You're not going to dominate me. Amen. I put you under. I crucify my flesh, and I'm going to walk in the spirit, and I'm going to let the joy of giving flow out of my heart, and I'm going to have a, an attitude of obedience. I'm going to have an attitude of submission to the word of God and to the things of God, and I'm going to do what the word says, and I'm going to believe God's word, and I'm not going to back down from the promises of the word of God. And I don't care what anybody says, and I don't care what the circumstances look like. I will get my breakthrough. Because if the word says it, that settles it for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Amen. So, redeem the time. Purchase time back. How do you do that? Well, obedience will get you out of debt. Obedience will help you to redeem the time because that's the price of admission is obedience into the things of God. The price of admission basically into the blessing of God, into the abundance of God is going to be obedience. And as we obey, then we... Get into that place of surplus. But disobedience is going to cause that us to go in, in deficit. And here's the, another thing. And I'll close with this because this is very, very important. We, what we need to understand. Watch this now. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer or for the sower. So God gives seed to the sower. Right? Okay. So you make a decision. I'm going to be a sower. And then God's going to give you seed to sow. Right? And then bread for eating. Remember, sowing comes before eating. Sowing comes before eating. If you put eating before sowing, you'll end up in the garden just like Adam and Eve were. They ate and they died. God said, so, so I give you seed. Take the garden of Eden, fill the whole earth with it. Amen? But they put their eyes on that one tree they should not have been eating from, which really was a symbol of obedience or disobedience knowledge of good and evil obedience good disobedience evil so they chose to disobey and they chose to eat 
And the moment they ate, they died. So be a sower and believe God to sow. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. And here's what begins to happen when you begin to believe God for seed to sow. You're going above and beyond your needs. Because most people, most people use their faith just for their personal needs. But Jesus said, if you're only using your faith for your personal needs about what you will eat, what you will wear, what you will drink, you are of little faith. There, I said it. You still love me? I said it because I love you. You of little faith. He said, why are you worried about just what you're going to wear and eat? He goes, I want you to believe for more. I want you to believe for big things. Seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness. Put your, build the kingdom. Be a kingdom builder. Yes. And to build the kingdom, you're going to need to use your faith above and beyond your personal needs. Stretch out your faith. Believe for seed to sow. Because I'm going to give you seed to sow. All he's asking is, look, listen, and I'm not asking you or God's not asking you to take away from your, from your family and, and daily needs. Do you understand me? What he's saying is, use your faith to believe for more seed to sow. Because he gives seed to the sower. So, and here's what happens. When you begin to use your faith above and beyond your personal needs, when you stretch your faith out for other things, guess what happens? You go to another level. Because you're actually using your faith. You actually have greater faith now. You go beyond the little faith. You have greater faith because now you're building the kingdom. And you believe in God for seed to sow for the kingdom. And you just simply become a conduit. Because he promised that he'll give you seed to sow. And I live like this. I mean, you know, this is how the ministry operates. People always ask me, how do you do the things you do? Because I said, I just believe God for seed to sow. And then I sow the seed, and I call in the harvest, and it comes. Amen. People say, well, how do you do it with, you don't have a big church yet. Well, you don't have to have a big church. You have to have, a big, you have, to have big faith. It's not about a big building. It's not about a big crowd. Amen. I've gone to churches with 20 people and seen some of the largest offerings. And I went to a church to preach for 2,000 people. 2,000 people. The offering was $400. I'm the guest speaker on a Sunday morning. 2,000 people. $400 offering they gave me. And then I went to, a, same day I went to a night service. This was in Florida. So that one church was up there somewhere, somewhere in the central Florida. Then I drove. I had lunch. They should tell you something. They didn't even take me to lunch. <laughs> so I got my own lunch, and I drove two hours to go preach in a night service in Wesley Chapel. Church was meeting in a clubhouse, 20 people. 20 people. And they said, we want to be a blessing, and they sowed a seed. And then I, I can't remember, but it was, you know, well over $1,000. Just a, just a love offering. So it tells you the crowds don't mean nothing. It all has to do with the heart, the, the joy of giving, the heart of giving. Do you understand me? Hallelujah. So I'm not moved by crowds. I'm not moved by crowd sizes. Oh, well, we got a big crowd today. We'll get a big offering. It has nothing to do with that. I don't even look at that because I don't do it for the money. Do you understand me? I, I go to do it to be a blessing to the people. And if the people have an attitude to be a blessing back, then that's what it is about. But they have to be taught. And you can always see the people that have been taught. If they've been taught properly by the word of God, they just respond to the word of God. Because the word of God gets in their hearts and begins to do a work. And begins to give them understanding and revelation. Amen. And about what it is to, to build a kingdom. To be a kingdom builder. So in that little clubhouse, the church, they said, oh, we have this missionary from Turkey. And we want to be a blessing to the Turkish people. And we want to get behind, you know. Pastor Corey's ministry in Turkish revival ministries, and he's preaching the gospel to the Muslims on television. He's going to the nations, carrying revival. Let's be a blessing. And people started running up, putting money in the buckets. And they were dancing and, and, and shouting. And I said, all right, this is a place that's going to grow. This is a place. They might be in a clubhouse now, but they're going to they're gonna grow. They're going to increase. Because I know it. I, see, I know it when I see it. I know it when I see it. Hallelujah. I know it when I see it. And then, I, you know, and, and, and let me tell you what happened with the 2,000-member church. I preached, did the altar call. Altar was filled. Then the Lord gave me a word for the, the youth 
like 75 youth came up the fire guy hit him they all fell on top of each other like dominoes because they didn't even have catchers revival was breaking out I was way over my time my, my time limit so I'm, I'm very careful I looked at the pastor I said my time is up he said no 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 prophesy over the youth so I did and I heard that some of the uh, deacons got upset that I went 15 minutes over time but I did check it I did check with the pastor you know and then the deacon that was going to receive my love offering got up and said on your way out there'll be some ushers with the boxes remember Corey on your way out that's what he says remember Corey on your way out that is so disrespectful that is so disrespectful remember Corey on your way out what a great what an introduction about just he's just Corey you know when you don't respect and honor the anointing that's what happens they they ousted that pastor they ousted that pastor because he wanted to have a move of God and the deacon board didn't want him to have a move of God because the church was deacon possessed <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem when the deacon board runs the church you know deacon's job is to clean toilets and 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 move chairs and serve food not run a church the whole thing is upside down man we got problems <laughs> we got problems but it's a denominational thing you know hallelujah so remember Corey on your way out most of them forgot by the, time, by the time they got from the front, front row to the back door, they forgot about me. Remember Corey? Oh, I'm going to forget Corey on the way out. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, like I said, you know, it just, it's about the heart. It's about the heart. So God is good. Is this helping you here today? Amen. Amen. Use your faith to believe God for seed to sow. That's all we ask you to do. Use your faith for, be, for, for seed to sow. Lord, I want to be a sower. I want to be a greater blessing. And, and you, may only, you may not have it, have it then, but I guarantee you, it'll come to you. The Lord will bring it to you if you use your faith. And then you live by faith. You'll, you'll live from your seed, not from your job. Your job is not your source, guys. Your job is not your source. God is your source. Make sure that God is your source. Make God your source. Not your job, not your boss, not your 401k, amen, not the government. Hallelujah. And that's what they want to do. They want to bring in socialism so that everyone looks to the government like they're God. And everyone, they want everyone to look to the government and, what, and whoever you look to will be your master. Government is not our master. Jesus is our master. Amen. Amen. We don't worship government. We don't serve government. And government's job is, to, is not to provide for us. Government's job is just to provide the basic structure so we can live a prosperous life. Government's job is not to dictate to, to what we can do and what we cannot do. Amen. And I can tell you right now, God is not a socialist. He doesn't take... He didn't take from the, the guy that produced the ten talents and give it to the one that... Buried is one talent. That's what socialism will do. God rewards those who walk by faith. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So diligently seek him. Establish this as a principle in your life. Diligently seeking God. Inquiring of and requiring of. That's what it means to seek the Lord. I inquire of him. Make sure that he's involved in every decision I make. And I do not make a decision unless I've heard from the Lord. And I'm, unless I have scripture, thus saith the Lord, it is written. When I know it is written, then I can, man, I can, I can, I can, I can grab a hold of that. And I can walk by faith. And I know that that is the unshakable word of God. And I'm standing on the foundation that is the rock. And I am unshakable. I am standing on unshakable foundation. And I will not be moved. And I will, when I know that I've done what I needed to do, and I'll continue to stand I will stand, I will stand, and I will stand, and I know that I know that I know God will do what he promised he will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So do you trust him? Yeah. Do you trust him? Yeah. Do you tr trust him to meet your needs? Yeah. Amen. And that is the least of what God's going to do. Hallelujah. Begin to believe him for seed to sow. Begin to believe him. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm stretching my faith out for seed to sow. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go above and beyond what I've always been doing. Hallelujah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray about these things. I'm going to pray about it. Lord, give me, give me a number to sow. Give me an amount to sow. Tell me what to sow into. What do I need to do? 
And then what are you doing now? You're using your faith for bigger things. And, you, and as you stretch your faith, that's what's going to cause you to go to another level. Because if you're always believing God just for your needs, you're going to stay at pretty much the same level. You understand me? But when you begin to believe God for beyond your needs, then now you can actually go to another level. And now your faith will actually lift you up. Hallelujah. So your faith needs to be stretched. Amen. Everybody's into yoga. How about stretching your faith a little bit? We got Christian yoga clubs now. Churches doing yoga. Are you kidding me? You know what, it's, you know what it comes from? I mean, I, you can stretch. That's fine. But don't, do, don't call it yoga. That's, all, that's a whole other thing. That's an Eastern religion. That's mysticism. It's about opening your chakras and third eyes and, and then channeling spirits. Are you kidding me? And seeking inner peace. Mm, please. I'm going to smack that thing up the side of the head. No, they got, they got yoga clubs and churches. What is going on here, guys? Amen. I mean, I've done sports. We had to stretch. You know, you got to stretch the muscles. You can't, you know, wake up and run 5K. You're going to hurt yourself. So you got to stretch your faith muscles too. If you're going to run the race. Hallelujah. Who wants to run their race? Come on, stretch your faith muscles. Reach, reach a little further every time. Hallelujah. This is what I've been doing. You know what? I'm going to reach a little further and believe God to do even more. Hallelujah. I'm just going to believe God. I'm going to keep stretching. I'm going to keep stretching my faith muscles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is this helping anybody here this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Come on, everybody. Just do a little stretch for me. Uh, stretch. Say. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and then stretch out like this. I'm stretching my faith muscle. I'm reaching further in the things of God. I'm reaching further for more. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. For some of you, that's the only time you stretched in like three months. Oh, my God. I stretch every morning. I wake up. I gotta stay nimble. This is exercise for me. I preach and I walk around and jump up and down. You know, it's like exercise. Hallelujah. And the way I walk sometimes on a Sunday, I walk like a couple of miles, three, four miles here. People don't realize. And one hour of preaching, you lose one liter of water. So I gotta drink water. I gotta rehydrate because all the you know, breath, the breath and, the, and, and, the, and the, the moisture that leaves your body when you preach, you got to drink water. So if I get dehydrated, I start to feel it. <laughs> I know we're very practical here. Hallelujah. And I have no time limit, so I'm just flowing. Is it okay if I flow? <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, I'm stretching my faith muscles. Every time I believe God, for seed to sow. Every time I believe God for a new level, I'm stretching my faith muscles. And then I'm being equipped to run my race. And I will not stumble and fall. I will finish my race. And I will receive my reward in full. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll give you an opportunity to sow this morning. We'll give to the Lord our tithes and offerings. Uh, I'd like to ask the ushers to please come. And they can serve you with offering envelopes. If you need an offering envelope for your giving this morning, you can write your, make your checks out to the river, River West Palm Beach, River WPB, all of that would work. You can also give by way of credit card. If you, you can fill out the offering envelope. You can give by way of cash. Hallelujah. We also have electronic forms of giving. We use the Tithely system, so you can download the Tithely app for your Apple or Android device and use the app to give. 
and it should be able to find the, the church by location. And you can just set up a quick profile with your credit card, debit card, or checking account. You can also do text giving. The 561-708-4990 is our text number. If you text the word give the first time, you'll get a link, and you click on it. You can set up a profile, and it connects to the whole Tidely system. You can also use our church app to give. You can download the church app if you haven't downloaded it already. There's a way for you to click on the heart there to give. And then um, you can also do online giving, whether on YouTube or Facebook Live. We have links for you. Just click on those and you can give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to just also, talk, uh, speaking of... Um, Speaking of sowing, uh, just above and beyond, you know, the regular operation, no budget of the church. Obviously, we've got Christmas season coming up, so we're getting Christmas decorations. We really want to, uh, we've, you know, do a great job here, and we're working with a company. They're now do, doing a design for us for the stage, and so um, we're setting a budget at about three thousand dollars. I believe that will help us with the new stage design. We got to, you know, do some things here with some new lights and some decorations and some design and then the Christmas decorations and everything so you can sow towards that even now or you can bring it later you can believe God for it you can pray about it amen hallelujah so I'm believing God for three thousand dollars to come in so we can decorate for Christmas the lobby this area and then we really need to do something a little bit nicer. I know people say, well, we like it. It's, it's fine. It's plain, but we got to do something a little bit more here. <laughs> it's a little too plain. <laughs> awesome. Well, let me go to the app and so pray about what you would do, what the Lord would have you do, and really let the Lord direct you, you know, be led not by your mind, but be led by the Spirit in prayer about your giving. And pray about giving, and that's another important part of it. People pray about a lot of things but they don't pray about giving. So pray about giving. Ask the Lord what he would have you do. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. For putting all the pieces together this church for growth, laying a foundation. Amen. We're digging, we're pouring in the concrete now, you know, pouring in the concrete, the foundation. The pillars are going up. We'll keep building and we'll keep building. Thank you, Jesus. One important area is youth and Josh is starting to have a breakthrough, breakthrough with the youth. Amen. Josh is starting to have a breakthrough with the youth. And another important area is kids' ministry. And we're, we're making some adjustments there and getting ready for growth. Bring your kids, guys. Bring your kids. Bring your kids. Bring your kids. Bring kids. If you don't have any, have some kids and bring them. <laughs> Natural church growth. <laughs> Not you, Jessica. You, you bring five. I think, I think that you got your, you got your hands full. <laughs> oh, praise God. Everybody ready to sow? Awesome. Give with a glad heart. Give cheerfully. As you give, just go, ha, ha, ha. Amen, and then, thank you, Jesus. You have a testimony. Come. I'm, I'm, I like testimonies. Come up here. Sure. Tell us what's going on. Well, the having faith and stretching yourself. Um, Last year, I was going through a very hard divorce, and I was struggling financially. <laughs> I plugged into the River School of Ministry um, as soon as I came to this church, and 
I was here one night on the floor, and you were talking about this same type of thing of just stretching yourself and giving. And at the time, I only had like 300, 300 and something dollars in my bank account. And I heard the Lord tell me to give all of it, and that was everything that I had. And I have three kids, so that scared me. Um, and I was negotiating in my head with God about, you know, I can't give all of this, God. I just, this is all I have. And uh, he said three different times, I was on the floor, and I heard him say, clear your bank account. And I was like, no. At first, I was defiant, and I said, no. And then I came up for prayer. I was on the floor, and you had said, Maybe you need to clear your bank account tonight for your breakthrough. <laughs> and I was still on the floor negotiating, and then again he said it. Maybe you need to clear your bank account again to get your breakthrough. And so I wound up giving everything that I had that night. And the next morning, my aunt just sent me $400. And I didn't ask, I didn't tell her that I needed any money, but... It was God instantly blessed me because I was obedient. And I cleared my bank account last year two other times after that. And the third time, there was absolutely no hesitation at all. Like, I didn't feel what I felt the first time. And I just trusted God. And birthed out of that was a couple businesses now. And just, I've been extremely blessed Financially, I always have more than what we need, and it's just absolutely amazing. That's God is awesome. amazing. Obedience, that's really what it is. It's the, it's the test of trust. It's the test of trust, obedience. Do you really trust him, you know? Because God's not going to try to take anything away from you. He's trying to bring more into your life. But sometimes you have to, it's not clearing the bank account, it's clearing the heart, really. Clearing the heart from the fear, clearing the heart from the worry, clearing the heart from trusting in other things. And then you, you can step over into that realm because that's how we've lived, you know. That's how we made it in the ministry. Amen. Gosh, lead us. Let's worship the Lord. I just feel we need to worship a little bit here. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The splendor worship you, Father. The worship you. Great. And how great 
is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, we we'll see how great, how great is our God. He's a name. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise.
follow the Holy Ghost, stay in this attitude of worship. I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures and I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost. But I just keep going back to that word. It's clearing out the clutter in the heart. It's not clearing out a bank account or it's really making room in your heart because the Bible says with the heart you believe what happens is the clutter in your heart will hinder your faith and having been on the subject of faith for a few weeks now it's one thing obviously I share and teach on principles of faith but I just sense because I when he started to play the piano I just felt we need to worship we need to worship Worship is something that God does actually. Praise is what we do and worship is what God does. When, Because in worship, God comes with His presence. And then He begins to do that work in our hearts also. Worship is the place of surrender. Worship is the place of consecration. And I'm going to follow the Holy Ghost because I just sense in my heart for certain people to go to the next level for certain people to see the breakthrough for certain people to overcome certain things there are some things that have been cluttering your heart thoughts, worries, cares situations, circumstances and I sense that there is a time of consecration in this place feel it there's certain things that you need to just bring to the altar and surrender to the Lord and to consecrate your life afresh it could be just one thing but that one thing remember it's the little foxes that spoil the vine it could be just that one thing it could be a clutter of many things that have festered or just kind of built up over time but Today is a day to just go free. I believe you're going to leave this place totally free as you come and surrender. So I just want to open up the altar. And I want to call. And you know in your heart that you need to consecrate your life afresh to the Lord. There are certain things you just need to bring to the altar. And I want you to begin to come and stand here right now. Just begin to come. Just come. Just say I need to just come to the Lord and bring some things to the altar. I need to consecrate myself afresh. There have been things that have just holding me back. There have been things that have just been hindering me. There have just been things I've been focused on that's distracting me. There are things that have been worrying me. There are things that have been... I just need to bring to the altar. And if that is you, just come. You just come stand here. Maybe you need to give your life to the Lord. Maybe you haven't even surrendered your life to Jesus. Maybe you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Today is the day of salvation. It's the time to just come and say, Lord, I'm going to surrender. I need you in my life. I'm going to open up my heart for you to come. Hallelujah. Just bring them up, guys. If you would just come closer a little bit. Just bring everybody closer. How would you... And just lift your hands to the Lord as you come. My best and just yield and surrender. And I and give it to the Lord. Some of the things you've been trying to work it out. You've been trying to do it. You had your hands on it. It's time to take your hands off. It's time to take your hands off. Put it in the hands of God. Put it in the hands of Jesus. The longer you hold on to it. The longer he can't do anything about it. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's a husband or wife. Maybe it's a work situation. Maybe it's an offense. Bring it to the Lord. Surrender it at the altar today. Surrender it at the altar. The burden removing anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
name of your son Jesus Lord as I stand here at this altar I surrender everything spirit soul and body I give you all of me Lord not my will but let your will be done I trust you I yield to you I surrender everything whatever it is that has been cluttering my heart I just give it to you right now remove it from me bring the peace of God I want to walk in peace I surrender all Jesus you are my Lord you're my master you're everything in you I live I move I have my being you're my all in all I trust you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my situations, every circumstance. I trust you. I trust you with my provision. I trust you with my healing. I trust you with my family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you as I lay hands on him, the burden removing anointing removes every burden and I thank you for the anointing freedom healing Jesus name filled thank you Jesus filled filled touch that's it that's it that's it that's it fire burn it out of her fire the Holy Ghost fire the Holy Ghost Jesus touch her fire Thank you, Jesus. You Touch. My That's it. That's it. That's it. It goes from you. 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 Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just keep worshiping. Just keep worshiping. My
Let the fire of God go right through you, man. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the power of God. 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 Power of God. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Rabba masiti kiti korobo shontorobo. Sometimes it's just yielding to the power of God. for those that need healing physical healing in their body you need physical healing in your body I can take some over here maybe take some people over there come stand here oh it's right there perfect there you go yes I take authority over this pain feet spine everything it needs to line up come in alignment in the name of Jesus be healed receive it now Father, I thank you. I thank you. I curse this thing and the, the, the diagnosis. I rebuke it. We reject it in Jesus' name. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Burn it out of you. Okay. Father, I thank you. I call your whole body into alignment in Jesus' name. The power of God go up and down your entire spine, your body. It be healed. In Jesus name thank you Lord yes I come against this symptom in the name of Jesus receive your healing be healed I break it off of you thank you father I command those cramps in the legs to stop be healed and your muscles loosed and everything come into alignment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. Oh, yes. 
You're in for prayer? Why don't you come stand? You are worthy of are, you, are you praying? Are you in for prayer or are you just worshiping? Oh, you're worshiping. Okay. She's worshiping. From you are all things. She can take pictures and worship. That's, why, that's what you need to do. You need to, you need to receive you while you're serving too. Glory. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, you I break every symptom, every physical attack. I break it off of you and I call you healed you are in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. For from you are all things, to you are all things. Thank you, Lord. You deserve the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. For from you are things. Just stay under the anointing as the Holy, the Holy Spirit now ministers. You deserve the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take a plant, just put it out in the sun with no water. 
like you. The heat. There are none like you. You have to water it. So you're being watered now. You're being watered as you've been saturated in this presence. I abide in your presence. And the Holy Ghost is preaching. I'm all not day and all night. speaking to people. The Holy Spirit is speaking to people. He's ministering. Everybody hears something different. But the beauty of it is when you're in His presence and every other voice is quieted, you can hear more clearly. And it's in times like this you hear. Thank you, Jesus. Like she heard on the floor three times, you know. And then I confirmed it. But it was just obedience. It wasn't about money. It was about obedience. But it was about clearing the clutter, the struggles, the worry, the situation she was going through. And then she got a breakthrough and she started. She continued to do that, walk in it. The very thing that got you to breakthrough is the very thing you need to keep doing. It's not a one-time thing. It's the consistency. and Don't miss that. The consistency. in a very small seed it could be a small action it could it, it could look like it, it's insignificant Jesus certainly looked very insignificant when he was born in a manger there was not a lot there was not a big hoopla and hype and it and it looked very insignificant but it was that insignificant what it looked insignificant to the natural eye was the greatest work of God ever to change the world, to change the destinies of billions of lives. Never underestimate the small seed. Even, a, even though it might look like a mustard seed, tiny, when applied, when acted upon, brings forth a great breakthrough, a great change. Samamba Many miss it because they look for the big bang. They want the angelic choir to come. They want the big spectacular thunder, earthquake, you know but it's in the still small voice. That's why we walk in on a daily basis. You're not gonna have a big, huge, major, spiritual, earth-shaking encounter every day or a leading of the Spirit every day. It's the still small voice of the Spirit. And you gotta tune out the other voices to hear that. And you gotta immerse yourself in the Word. You gotta immerse yourself in prayer. You gotta immerse yourself in worship. That's what we're doing today as the church. We're just immersing ourselves in His presence, being saturated, being strengthened. Hallelujah. Burdens are removed. Practice His presence. Make this a lifestyle. Cut out the clutter. Cut out the distractions. Protect yourself, protect your heart, protect your thought life. Be careful, be heed, be careful what you hear. Don't allow the wrong people to speak to you. Shut off the negative voices, shut off the voices of fear, shut off the voices of 
negativity. Shut off the voices of limitation. Speak to yourself. Speak to yourself. That's why it says speaking to yourselves. In songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody unto the Lord, giving thanks to the Lord. Speak to yourself. Speak the word. Encourage yourself by speaking the word to yourself. Write the vision. Make it plain. Speak it. Read it. Run with it. Even though it may tarry, it surely is for an appointed time and it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Step out of the comfort zone. Some of you, the Lord's been stirring things in your heart about new things and, and you haven't stepped out because you become comfortable or you got used to basically something, but it's not working. You know it too. Step out, step out, step out, step forward. Do it. The Lord's going to come through for you. Hallelujah. That's, this is exactly why you can't be rigid in revival. You have to be flexible. There's a flow to it, and the Lord will do things. wind will change direction the wind of the spirit will change direction make the adjustments follow the wind of the spirit and you'll you'll know you'll know when you'll know when it changes because you feel like you're a sitting duck in the middle of the ocean when there's no wind you have to adjust the sail to catch the wind to to get going again amen is this speaking to anybody here today anybody receiving a word yes praise God thank you Jesus all right well Josh will just pray because if you're you know you can stay under the anointing for a few minutes but um, thank you for joining the broadcast I just um, I just need to see everyone involved in our kids' ministry. You should have received a text that I will just have a very quick meeting, Pastor Rose and I, with you guys after the service. So if you would just come over to the kids' area. The rest of you, do not be in a hurry to get up. Just stay under the anointing. We don't mind. We love you all. I hope you've been blessed. It's just a different kind of service. So we'll just kind of gently ease our way out as the Lord's still ministering to people but you're also willing to just welcome to just sit here sit here no problem we love you all continue tonight